Necro for 2020. You can't understand why Stamina Necromancer is going to be the best Stam class to run for next patch. Let me do you a favor and explain why. Real quick, Stamina Necromancer has access to Major Protection. You have a lot of uptime with Major Protection using not Necrotic Potency, but uh, Dead in Pain. So because whenever an opponent dies or whenever your Blast Bones goes down or whenever your Shade falls off or... If you want to resummon your summoner's armor, once you're below 10 seconds, you're going to gain access to a corpse. That corpse, is, of course, is going to give you access to um, two seconds uptime. Two seconds uptime on major protection per corpse. So if you're just running Blast Bones, Spirit Mender, and Summoner's Armor, you have access to basically like six seconds of uptime without even having uh, having to kill anybody. Right? Because all you have to do is wait for your Blast Bones to drop immediately. Um, you'll gain access to two seconds. A few seconds later, your mender will, will fall off, and then you get another two seconds. When someone dies, you gain two seconds. So in essence, you have a pretty high uptime on 30% damage reduction. Not to mention that the shade, uh, the spirit mender itself, gives you access to additional 10% just flat mitigation. Now, of course, while all the percent mitigations don't necessarily stack that well because they're not additive, right? They're multiplic multiplicative, excuse me. Um, it's better than not having it. It's just better than not having it. Like, like a class that doesn't have access to just straight 10% damage reduction and access to major mending, right, is obviously weaker. Now, the only thing that really kept Stamina Necromancer kind of at bay was, right, Broken Blast Bones broken blast bones because it wouldn't go off it would you know it would get stuck it would not hit its hit its opponent that's really what kept stamina necromancer at least you know f from this point into ever since its introduction to being basically the number one stam class to play but with the change coming to the next patch there's no reason really to play any other stamina class because you literally have high uptime on major protection literally 100% uptime on major to file basically the extra 10% from the spirit mender then on top of that Zenimax decided to buff their uh their passive that reduces what is it the amount of um dot damage that they take by 15% then you have access whenever you have a debuff on you god fucking knows whenever you're in a scenario where you have multiple opponents you're gonna have some sort of a negative effect on you so that means you're gonna get access to an additional 8% healing on top of that Whenever someone dies, you know, you just automatically restore right here, sustain harm. Just 10 it was 10% before. When they changed the way Mortal Coil works, I really thought they were going to nerf this passive. Instead, they buffed it. Instead, they buffed it. It says it reduces the damage from damage over time abilities by 50% um, while you have basically any of these abilities up, which is basically your armor buff. So you literally have it up all the time. The other thing is that... Um, Necromancer has arguably the best healing over time via Mortal Coil. I spoke about this in a previous video. I'll either link it below or I'll link it up top. But just basically, Mortal Coil heals for more than a full tick rally. So rally lasts for 15 seconds, right? At the end of the rally, you gain a heal, right? It says that a rally will last. Excuse me, rally will last you for 20 seconds, but um, it only scales up. It only scales up um, to three times what it is. The full heal of rally is actually weaker than the full heal that you get from Mortal Coil, and fucking Mortal Coil is free, right? And it gives you sustain, and it gives you access to um, corpse consumption, so you get the extra 10, the extra 10. Um, ultimate from using using mortal coil besides giving you access to uh, while slotted healing is increased so you get sustained the sustain is actually pretty good right put up the old pull up the old calculator because math is king right so you gain 1260 over 12 seconds and of course that's times two Right? If you want to talk about it in terms of regen, it's free. It's free 210 stamina regen plus the heal that plus the heal that you get. Now, if you're running, of course, the major problem where 
this is kind of what caused Stamina Necromancer to be even arguably just like literally over the top. It's primarily because originally Mortal Coil was a magicka ability and then they changed it so that it scaled off of your highest stat. So what that meant was Stamina can stack higher, uh, higher damage than Magicka can, especially Magicka Necromancer. So it's real easy to have a five, you know, a five k, six k weapon damage build, even in no CP, right? It can show you the build that I run in no CP, right? My build, I run almost fifty nine, almost fifty nine hundred in no CP, and this is with this is with um, a pot and uh, you know after securing a kill with a with your two handed from the two handed passive, I'm sitting that. But even even so, even, even I've, most of my builds, I'm like at a thousand, and I'm still just fine. But you can take a look at the tooltip on the mortal coil. This is a no CP, right? Fully buffed. This is an this is a no CP mortal coil, right? It's twenty it's twenty three thousand, right? Over twelve seconds, right? It's a simple math. You twenty three k divided by twelve, right? And you got two k healing. This is per second. This is almost like nineteen hundred per second. You got to cut it in half because of Cyrodiil, right? But then. If you're talking about just in terms of HP regen ticks, right? That's your HP regen tick. That's what Mortal Cola gives you in every two seconds in Cyrodiil, right? That's after the after the debuff, after the fifty percent debuff. So you have 20, 20, and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And on top of that, it gives you access to an additional two hundred and one stamina recovery. <clears throat> and mo- and this is what makes Stamina Necromancer so strong is the high uptime on blast bones look at the tooltip on my no cp blast bones and this is literally just a light attack and then i'm using flawless that's it it's just a light attack on the back bar i'm not using any proc sets to proc for extra damage that i got proc for extra um you know weapon damage that i got away for it's literally just a light attack on the back bar and db which necromancer has high uptime on deep on db because they get so much um ultimate back it's ridiculous how much ult that you get back on a necromat on the necromancer class and this is where the problem and then on top of that if i still have rally right i still have a 15k heal on my rally as you can see the tooltip the tooltip tool is 5183 you multiply that three i don't even have to use it because most of the time i just rely on my mortal coil and then on top of that i still get healing from the spirit guardian so the spirit guardian is still going to give me like 1150 every two seconds on top of the 1900 that i'm getting every two seconds so in essence that gives me over 3000 health recovery every two seconds not including my health recovery and i have almost nine like 900 so that li- that's literally 4000 health recovery without my rally heal and this is where necromancer especially stamina necromancer it just gets broken and then you also have access to things like hexproof right when you have so much healing over time between these two abilities it makes utilizing hexproof no problem where even though you could have access to having debuffs on you hexproof you can just shake them all off and not even worrying we're not even worry about the uh the hp loss because you have so much healing coming in at one time and of course this gets exacerbated in areas like Cyrodiil where you have access to CP and CP is broken. Anybody that plays in a CP campaign knows that CP is broken, especially especially the healing. And this is primarily what makes Stamina Necromancer um, are literally the strongest class that you can play. It's literally hands down the strongest class that you can play. The only reason that it was held back was because of broken blast bones. Because blast bones, you put out a blast bones and the fucking thing would just not move. And then and you'd be missing out a huge chunk of your damage, but on the PTS they fixed it where it just automatically jumps to its opponent. So you automatically are going to have 100% uptime on Major Defile, and then it's even worse in CP because you have the CP nodes that increase Major Defile, and then you can run like Minor Defile on your front bar or run a Shock Left for the extra damage. And that, that's that, that's the primary problem that you're gonna that you're gonna end up running into, and then people are gonna be like, well, why am I playing? You know, stamina nightblade, like where you can literally blow somebody up. This shit's almost 18k. This is a no CP. Blighted blast bones, 18k and no CP. My 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 dizzy swing is 14, almost 14k. My critical rush is 7k and no CP. And this is this is the primary problem of why you see people running around in like heavy armor, holding block, spamming heals, you know, earth gore and all that shit, is because stamina is just so over tuned 
that if you try to play a magic build, you're like, why the fuck am I playing a magic build? Why am I taking so much damage? On top of the fact that you've got to run light armor and you don't even deal as much damage. And this is the primary problem is that they've never been able to resolve one, the weights, right? You, like if you're running a very glassy build in light armor, you should be very bursty, but very but very squishy. And then you look at Magic Sork. Magic Sork is anything but that. You look at Magical Warden. Magical Warden is anything but that. It's anything but squishy. Magical Warden is tanky as fuck. Magic and Decay, on the other hand, is squishy as fuck in light armor. And it doesn't even have the damage to to you know kind of like overcome the, the weaknesses of being light armor, less HP, less healing, you know, less less survivability. And that doesn't even it doesn't even have um, the damage to, you know, basically to compensate for that fact. And every other, and this has been ESO's primary problem. Is they've never been able to balance. You're in medium armor. You're very bursty. You, you've got mobility, but you're very squishy. You're in heavy armor. You're, you know, you're primarily a little bit slower. You're not. You you don't have as much burst. This is always this has always been the problem. Developers have never been able uh, to get this under control, and it always it, it's what always has provided been been an area of contention for a long time. But in any event, I'll link the video discussing more in depth, you know, the differences between Magicka and Stamina Necromancer. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if this is your first time checking out the content. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future, future content. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless.